All right, then I'll just have you guys uh, speak up a little bit because I this is not a very good microphone. Okay. It's off. Oh, okay. Hi, we're here with our monthly program from the Marshfield Clinic um, on the second Tuesday of every month here at the Senior Center where we're talking about wellness topics. Today we're going to talk about uh, sleep and good sleep habits. Um, I'm Dr. Hanneman. Hi, my name is Dr. Chan Mono. So nice to meet you guys. Thanks everyone for coming here. So me and Dr. Annelies will talk about sleep and sleep hygiene today. So just before we begin, uh, I got some fun facts about sleep today. So do you know that 12% of all the people dream just in black and white? <laughs> I never knew that until I found out this morning. And you know, the average human spends about one third of the time just for sleeping. And if you guys have cats or dogs, they spend about two thirds of their lives just for sleeping. And 15% of us are sleepwalkers and, you know, and within five minutes of waking up, almost, you know, 50% of dream is forgotten. And the most important thing which I want you to remember is, you know, your, if at all you have any sleep deprivation, your pain tolerance will go down and we don't know why. So, with these fun facts, uh, we'll be discussing more about, you know, what are some of the things you could do to improve your sleep hygiene or, you know, fight your sleep difficulties? Yeah, so um, a common complaint is that people have difficulty sleeping. And a lot of times when we talk with them, we find out that there are factors um, in their habits and daily life that are probably affecting their ability to fall asleep. So some things you can do to help you um, fall asleep and stay asleep are, um, first of all, to have a routine so that you're getting up at about the same time every day and going to bed at the same time every day because your body learns that routine and um, gets used to waking up at that time and going to sleep at that time. And if you're um, trying to go to bed a lot earlier than that, your body's not going to be tired. Or if you're staying up late, you might still wake up at that same time the next day. Um, other things to do are um, to kind of keep an eye on your uh, eating and drinking habits. So um, really shouldn't be drinking caffeine six hours before you're planning to go to bed. So probably after lunch, you shouldn't be having any more coffee. Um, and same with alcohol. Although alcohol makes people sleepy, it actually um, makes the quality of your sleep lower. So you shouldn't um, have alcohol at least um, four hours before you're planning to go to bed. Other things is making sure you are not eating right before you go to bed. So it's usually good to have at least two hours uh, between when you last ate and going to bed and ideally even more like four hours. Um, other things that you can do are making sure that your bedroom is um, dark. So having some blackout curtains, especially in the summer when it's light for so long during the day. Um, making sure that you're really using the bedroom just for sleeping uh, because if you're doing other things in the bedroom like watching TV or reading for a long time then your body gets used to that and doesn't associate the bedroom with um, the place that you sleep. Um, and same um, thing is that screens and whether it's a tablet or a TV um, or a phone all emit a blue light that um, your eyes sense and then is actually sensed by your brain and actually tells your brain to wake up. So avoiding screens for one or two hours also helps um, your body get ready for bed and um, keeps it from uh, feeling like it should be waking up when you're getting ready to try to fall asleep. I think those are the most of the tips I have. I mean, those are some excellent tips. Like the only other thing which I would add to it is Try to avoid na having naps more towards the evening or at the time of dawn. Like try to, I mean, it's okay if you want to rest your body for some time during the afternoon after lunch. And try not to have, you know, this extensive nap. Like try to minimize it to not more than like 30 minutes or to an hour at max. So sleeping more towards the end of your evening or even at the time of dawn, it's, it's gonna, you know, cause some sleep deprivation or sleeping difficulties during the night time because the time frame between your nap and 
the time before you go to bed is so low that you're not going to get some adequate sleep during the night time. And having a regular exercise program, like, you know, at least like four or five times a week will definitely help with your sleep patterns to like try not to exercise right before you go to bed. I would say like try to exercise more, you know, like at around between four to six and not after six p.m. in the night. And the other things like Dr. Analyst told you, use your bed just for sleeping and don't try to do any other activities in your bed because your, your brain tends to learn what you do. Anyone have any questions? In, in some of the major sleeping problems that we normally see in the United States, like the first major thing which we normally see patients whenever we see, we see in the clinic is insomnia. And most of the people, they have some perceptions about insomnia, like what it is or like is all the sleeping difficulty called as insomnia. So I want to give some insight into what insomnia is, like any sleeping problem is considered as insomnia, like whenever I say sleeping problems, it could be the, you know, trouble falling asleep or you're having trouble staying asleep or even when you wake up the next day morning, you don't feel like you have rested enough and that could be considered as insomnia. And insomnia is never considered about, you know, how many hours you sleep. It's about your quality of sleep. Some people might sleep for just six hours and some people might sleep for eight to 10 hours. And it's just not that people who sleep for more time, have, you know, don't have insomnia. It doesn't work that way. Then the ideal recommendation from the American Society of Sleep Medicine is to have at least, you know, six to eight hours of quality sleep per and adult who is like above 30 years of age. Any thoughts on that, Dr. No, I think those are good points. Um, the one other sleep issue that I think we see a lot is sleep apnea, which I think a lot of people have heard about. Um, it's where people have difficulty breathing when they're laying down at night um, because your airway collapses and so they need a machine called a CPAP to help keep their airway open. Um, so for those people, it's very important that they use their machine, their CPAP to sleep every night. Uh, and for people who wonder about sleep apnea, um, things that people often experience is that um, typically they snore um, and often will have pauses in their breathing when they're sleeping at night and um, will even wake up gasping for breath because they weren't able to get air. Um, and sometimes their uh, partners notice this or even they can notice it themselves and they're really tired in the morning, even if they slept for a full eight hours because they're not getting good sleep and maybe even falling asleep while they're doing things during the day, whether it's working, um, reading, those kinds of things. Um, so if that's um, something that you're concerned about, it's something uh, important um, to bring up to your doctor to have them look into more. And, and people so often tend to neglect their sleeping problems because they think like, even if I don't sleep during the night, especially the elderly population, they might think that even if I don't get enough sleep during the night, like I have all day, you know, to sleep during the daytime. And I think it's a bad idea because sleeping deprivation can put you at higher risk of having heart disease it can cause more depression in the long term. It can cause, you know, increased obesity and all the other complications you get from that. So whenever you are in doubt whether your, you know, your sleep pattern is adequate or not, or if you don't feel like you have gotten enough rest during the night time, I think it's better to consider talking this out with your primary doctor rather than neglecting it. So, do you have any questions at all for us? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for attending today.